So in this episode, we're going to make a custom ability similar to Anti-Mage's Blink. We're going to be doing this in Lua, not data-driven. So if you're not aware, there's two ways that you can make abilities in Dota. One is data-driven and the other is through Lua. I highly recommend that you use Lua because that has a lot better use in the future. And it also the data-driven stuff is very limited once you try and do more advanced things. So if we go to our project folder and we go to scripts, and we go to the NPC folder, which is where our key value files are. And we want to open up heroes custom.txt. And we drag this into our text editor. And in here, we have a file describing our custom heroes. So what Dota does for heroes is you can only override a hero rather than making a new one. So in this case, it's overriding Templar Assassin. It states here we're overriding hero is the key and it says NPC Dota Hero Templar Assassin. And what it's doing is it's taking ability one and giving Templar Assassin uh, a different ability in slot one so it's overriding whatever her first ability is which i think is refraction so let's go into npc abilities custom.txt and open this up so this is our abilities key value file and as you'll see this ability here is templar assassin refraction holdout which is the same as in our hero uh, set to ability one now you can set ability two to be the exact same ability. You can assign the same ability to other heroes and so forth. So this is just one ability on its own and it can have multiple instances if you wanted to in your game. And kind of like how I would say Ruby can spell steal this ability and stuff like that. This will all still work with that. So what we want to do here is look at very quickly at some of the key values that are here. The ability behavior defines how you click or how you have to use the ability in the input of the game so there's all these different ones so you click on the ground in our point so for a blink dagger we want to change this we're going to change this to a point because what we're doing is just clicking on the ground you can change this to a unit target and there's a few different ones which i'll go into in the next episode which is more advanced ability stuff in the next episode but right now we're just looking at very basic ability but you can change the target that you're uh, like trying to click on so a unit target will only allow you to click your ability onto an a, a hero or a creep or even a building no it won't allow you a building a building is a different type again so we're just doing point which is a place on the ground on the map and these other values, if they're not applicable to what your abilities are doing, it won't uh, actually use these key values. So for example, this is a physical damage type ability, but we're not using damage in this example, so it won't ever be used. You can just leave it there if you want, or you can comment it out. But one thing that I wanna highlight here is the ability cooldown. So as you'll notice, it says 17, 17, 17, 17. What you can do here is you can say that this is on level one. This is what it, I'm trying to explain like, what does this mean? So this is on level one, the cooldown is 17. Level two, the cooldown is 17. Level three, the cooldown is 17. And level four, it's 17. If we wanted to lower the cooldown every level, we could say it decreases each level by a little amount. So it goes uh, a nine second cooldown on level four, level three is a 12 second cooldown and so forth. And we also have a mana cost of a hundred. Now, if we go into save this now, the problem is, is that we have not defined that this is a Lua ability. Now, let me go over here and get uh, defining how an ability in Lua is set up. So this is the wiki and I just need to copy and paste this in because I've not memorized this off. And what this does is it essentially assigns a, a Lua file to your, for the logic of this ability. Now what we're gonna go end up calling this file is custom blink. You can call it something else if you want, but for just uh, easier use of dealing with your project is to name everything the same. Now we're gonna have, create a file called custom blink over here. So if we go into my project, at the very start, go into scripts, vscripts, and beside add on.lua, go 
create new file and we'll call it custom link.lua. This is where our logic is going to end up going. And this is uh, really important that the name of this file is the same as your data file over here with the key value of custom blink. Now, the other thing that I wanna just change is see how this is called Templar Assassin Refraction Holdout. I'm gonna change this as well to be called custom blink. And this is just so that it's easier to remember and read through this code. And we're gonna save this. But now the problem is, is that our hero is still assigned this ability Templar Assassin Refraction Holdout, which doesn't exist anymore because we've changed the name. So we wanna change this back to custom blink. Now you need to make sure that you don't have a syntax error like that. Otherwise you will get a problem with your KV file when your game starts up, the data won't load in correctly. So this name is the same as our NPC custom ability. And also then this is the name of our file. So if we go over to our file here and we're gonna open up this now into our editor as well. So we're gonna write our very first ability. The first thing we're gonna end up doing is going custom blink. That's the name of our class. So in Lua, in custom games, if you're familiar with Lua, classes don't exist. Valve have added some extra functionality into Lua that's very just specific to these custom games in particular. And they have classes, which is kind of a similar uh, functionality that's uh, in other languages that you might see. And I'll explain what a class is in particular in a minute. So we'll call this a uh, custom. I'll explain what this means in a minute. Just let me type it up here. Blink. Okay, so what this means is that this is the name of our class and this is our function. Whoops. And this is the name of our function. This function is an event and what it's an event listener. So what it's doing is that it's listening into a certain event to happen within Dota. And when that happens, it will call this function. And what will happen is we'll just go and print uh, hello world in here the very first time to make sure that it works. And what's gonna happen when we go into Dota, because we have added a new file, uh, I think we can just still do a skip build here and it will probably still run. If it doesn't, we'll have to do a full compile. I don't think we do. Maybe we only have to build entities. We'll see anyway what ends up happening. Now we need to pick Templar Assassin. And now when we go in, we have our ability, but we need to level it up and then use it. When we use it, nothing happens. And the reason why nothing happens, that's actually pretty good because where the message is printing is into the console. If you wanna open up the console, you need to press the hotkey for it, whatever it is, you might be able to find it in the settings up here into hotkeys. But for me, it like I can't really tell you what key it's gonna be on your computer because you have different uh, keyboard layouts and stuff like that. So I don't know what the default one actually is. So in here, we actually have a message saying, hello world. So if we, we can use this console and we'll uh, go again and use the ability. And if we go back to the console, it says hello world down here at the very bottom on this line. So in the console, some stuff that can be kind of useful is to go clear and it will clear the console entirely. Now. This way, when we use our ability again, when it comes off cooldown, we can click on this and we'll see the very first message and the only message is hello world. Now, one of the other commands that's quite useful is called restart. So instead of going back and clicking this button of skip build every time, instead you can go and restart your custom game by just writing this command in. So now we're gonna write actual logic for this ability to make something very similar to Blink Dagger not almost like identical to it, but just some similarities. So I'm not going to explain this in super amount of detail. And why I'm not going to explain in super detail is because there's a lot of code that you can do. Like uh, the API is really big in custom games. And let me show you, right? This is the API for custom games. 
and this is where every single function that you can write in Dota is here and all of the existing classes. So these are all the global functions that you can call. As you see, there's a lot of them, but this keeps going down and down with all these different classes you can call. And I'm only halfway down the page at this point, and I don't want to go and overload you with information. So right now I'm just going to write some code and explain it line by line. So here we need to get the point that dish cursor position and then we need to go find clear space for unit caster point true so what this does is that it finds the caster it gets the caster from this ability self means this class which is custom blink this is our ability so it's getting the caster of this ability which is our hero Templar Assassin. Then we're gonna get a point which gets the current cursor position of this player. So you can see where they're clicking. Uh, this will return a vector of X, Y, and I think the Z axis is there as well. So what this will do is when you click on the ground in Dota, so see when I ping here, those locations uh, are snapped down onto the point of the map on the nav mesh it is in particular but wherever you click it will return that point on the ground so when I click you see the green it's going to return that point in space then find clear space for unit is a global function which will position a unit in a certain location what this true value does is it says that it's going to forcibly push other units out of the way to make way for this unit this can cause problems if you don't set this to true where units are overlapping with physics or whatever so it's generally used for true now you have a caster which is the hero and the point is a location and this is force onto this location and push everyone else out of the way so now we're going to go and restart this with our console command restart and this will restart our map back up and we're going to pick templar assassin again now, one thing is a little bit different about this ability than the blink dagger that anti-mage has. And you'll get to see why it's a little bit different. So we pick Templar Assassin here and we lock in Templar Assassin. Now, when we go to our ability and we click it, we click Q and click on this. It says, oh, look, we have an error. It says attempt to call method get cursor position and nil value. So if you can't read that or if after a little while that message on screen goes away, you can open up your console and see the message that's here in the console. So it's saying that it attempted to call this function called get cursor position and it didn't return anything which is saying a nil value it's returned which is invalid. And what's happened here is that I've actually spelled cursor wrong how do I even spell cursor? I don't even know. Get cursor position. I left out an R. Okay, I left out one letter. So I'm gonna copy and paste that in to make sure that I spelt it right this time. So I spelled cursor wrong. And this, this does happen, this is common enough thing. But we'll restart our code and we'll end up seeing that this time we won't get, we shouldn't get an error unless there's an error on the next line. And what happens in Lua, when you get an error, it if the error happens on this line, it will keep cascading down and not, it will just end the function and whatever is happening below this point will not get executed until the next end of that uh, function. So it stops executing your code. So if we go to Templar Assassin, and we run this here, and we use our ability, so when we click on our ability, is it going to reposition us? Okay, Dota lags sometimes when you load into it. And we click and it teleports us instantly. Now we're gonna do the cheat WTF, which removes cooldowns and your abilities don't go on cooldown. So now you'll see that my hero teleports everywhere that I click. But what makes this very different ability is that now it's a global ability because we have not set any ranges or limits to what we're doing which is a little bit overpowered I must say but let's say you want to blink off the map I cannot click out here 
and I cannot get a cursor position out here. So Dota refuses for the ability to like allow you to click off the map. So we don't have to care about that. So this is an anti-mage blink or something similar to it. A very, very simple example of doing custom abilities in Dota. And we're going to do more advanced custom abilities stuff in the next episode. And if you want to see more, make sure you subscribe.